Let's accessorize and talk about the five things I wish I had done when I got diagnosed with an autoimmune. Number one, if all your labs are showing up as healthy, like me, you may think, ah, oh, maybe my knee swells or my hip swells or my finger swell or I'm fatigued all the time and that's totally normal. No, it is not normal and it is normal for your labs sometimes when you have an autoimmune to still show up as completely normal. So don't let yourself be gaslit by doctors who tell you, you're fine, you're not fine, trust your gut. Two, the biggest mistake I ever made was only going to one doctor and then having that doctor perform a surgery on me that I didn't need. You need to go to more than one doctor and I wish someone had told me that just to get a variety of opinions. I know it's expensive and so timely and so annoying, but I really recommend not taking a step, especially towards medicine or biologics until you've talked to at least a few doctors to get their own opinions and don't force your own opinion on them. Just tell them what your symptoms are, what's going on, and then you have to kind of do your own research after you talk to at least three doctors. Say don't be opposed to medicine, and this is a big one for me to say because I was totally woo-woo holistic. I know the shots are scary, but I feel better than I ever have just for taking medicine for the first time this week. I, I wish I had done it sooner. I can't put this on for my life. Really recommend taking a half Western medicine, half Eastern medicine approach. Cutting out gluten or alcohol or sugar or dairy, getting a nutritionist, an integrative nutritionist or a doctor, but also complying with medicine and steroids and the things that will really help you. Infrared sauna, weekly acupuncture, I know it adds up and I found it makes a difference. And cold plunging. Last thing I regret not having done sooner is tracking my symptoms. Sometimes it corresponds, especially especially with girls for your time of the month. Sometimes it has to do with stress levels or something you ate or maybe after a Saturday night. It's okay to get frustrated. Sometimes there are no patterns that make sense. My patterns don't make sense. Maybe it just happens because it's an autoimmune and it's a body response and there's no rhyme or reason. That's so frustrating, I know. And there's nothing we can do except for control our outcome and our attitude after it happens. You'll find that people just kind of want to like slap a Band-Aid on you. They don't even know if I have rheumatoid or psoriatic arthritis because it doesn't even show up in my labs. You can make your emotions go like this. The amount of times I've gone sobbing to Dwayne Reed to pick up a steroid pack. Sobbing on crutches. An autoimmune is like this. Sometimes you're really good, sometimes you're really bad, and don't let it sway your emotions so much, but have a routine and a rhythm. You see my Epsom and salt baths. Like the second you start to feel something come on, develop a routine so that you kind of have a sense of normalcy in your flair. I have an amazing autoimmune group on Instagram, so there are so many girls in our 20s and 30s and 40s who randomly get an autoimmune. I'm so done being silent about it. I used to feel so alone because I could only talk to like eight year old women whose knees started to flare up. I was wondering where all the girls my age were. You don't have to do this alone and you shouldn't have to. Rumor that one in five women have an autoimmune. If you are watching this and you have one, welcome to the club. It's not as rare as you think. It can go into remission. It hasn't yet for me, but I will fill you in on the journey to get there. Look at this as a positive and as something that has helped you become more resilient. Every single girl or guy with an autoimmune always says it makes them so much more grateful. I'm so much more grateful of a person that I can get up and walk and I never thought I would say that. It's true, so love you. You got this.